So I need to, oh, there we go. I couldn't even see myself on the screen because my screen settings were so dark. Hello everyone, my name is Evelyn of Pink Sheep Design. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, today we are here to officially kick off a crochet along for this hoodie. So I had to wear it, of course. Got the hood, whoop, there, hood hoodie. Nice long sleeves, very oversized hoodie pocket. It's got the split here, uh, single crochet up the side. So it's got that nice like seam here, which I liked. Felt like that added to it. It's up here on the top too. Um, but this is what we're gonna make. So I'm, I'm super, super excited because I had two of these. Um, the very first one that I made that you see, if you purchase the pattern, there's photos of it throughout the pattern. Um, I ended up selling that one, so I do try to sell my samples so they don't have, you know, two or three of the exact same thing. Um, hello, Kim. Hello. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what we're going to make, and this is the last one that I own, uh, so it was time to make another one, and I feel like anytime I can, you know, if I can sell an older piece, it gives me a reason to make a newer piece with a different type of yarn, um, and ever since we tested this one, so when this one went through testing, um, there were quite a few people, quite a few people who used blanket yarn. So I've always wanted to make a blanket yarn version of this hoodie. So I'll show you guys the yarn that I'm planning to use now. I don't have all of the yarn that I'm planning to use for this one yet. And that's because I do have, I'll show you guys the first one, cover story by Lion Brand. So this thing is humongous. Right next to my face, it's bigger than my head. <laughs> um, but it actually only has 547 yards. So I say only. Um, it's more than double what you get in a regular skein of Bernat Blanket yarn. So Bernat Blanket yarn is usually about 220 yards. So you get more than double that in this. Uh, but it's not enough to make a hoodie. So the hoodie, it's it's long, it's got long arms, it's got the hood, it's got the pocket. So it does take a bit more yardage than some of my smaller designs. Um, hello, Bethy is here. Happy Hearts Day. Yes, I didn't even mean to do this on Valentine's Day, but my lives fall on Tuesdays. And so I wanted to keep with the regular live. Um, so happy Valentine's Day to anyone who is, you know, celebrating Valentine's Day or doing anything fun. Um, little baby spooky bats. Hello, Jacqueline is here. Winter is here. Hello. So what do y'all think? What do y'all think of the cover story? Uh, when I realized I didn't have enough, I went to go purchase some more of this, but Joann's did not have it in stock to ship. Um, and it was like $60 on Lion Brand, their website. So I was like, nah, nah we're going to try something else. So, uh, yeah, it's humongous. Uh, but it's not enough for the for the uh, entire hoodie. So I got on Joanne's website. They still have Bernat Blanket Yarn on sale. So if you guys want to use Blanket Yarn like me, uh, go on Joanne's website. They have the Bernat Blanket Yarn on sale. And I think there's a coupon where you can get shipping for $1.99. So you can check that out. But I bought hot pink, blue, purple. I bought a bunch of colors and I'm just going to see which one looks best. I'm thinking it's going to be the blue because I think the blue that I ordered is going to be as close to this. So, um, you know, so I can have just some, some fun little pops of color and I haven't decided where they're going to go. It may be the pocket and like, you can see how the sleeves here, how it, uh, the color variegated very nicely. So I think I might do like a sleeve, the cuff, might be a certain color, um, maybe this front border around the hood, uh, or the hood may be a different color. I don't know yet. I have no idea. I don't really know how far this is going to get me. Um, I'm definitely going to do the back panel and the front two panels with this yarn, and hopefully by then Joanne, the Joanne's order will be here. That's the goal, because um, we're not kicking this off. Uh, we're not actually starting on the pattern until next week. So you have until next week to pick out your yarn. 
Uh, this yarn, the one that I'm wearing right now, this is Lion Brand Mandala Thick and Quick. And I think they still make it. I'm pretty sure they still make it. There's a lot of fun colors. The um, self-changing is really nice, as you guys can see. I feel like it goes really well with the theme of the hoodie, which is like that hippie style of the hoodie. So I feel like this yarn is a really good fit if you want that kind of style. Um, but pretty much any size six super bulky yarn will work for this hoodie. Um, even if it's a little bit bulkier, it just won't have quite the holiness to it. So if you guys look up close, um, you can definitely, like, I can stick my pinky finger through there. You can see the holes here. This is a little bit smaller, a little bit of a lighter weight size six yarn. This is what you would get if you used, like, a Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick. Um, I have a feeling the blanket yarn will be very similar. But if your size six yarn is a little bit thicker, um, it'll just be a little denser, which might be nice depending on what you're going to wear it for. Um, and then if it's a little bit thinner, uh, you know, I have some people who like to use the Karen Chunky Cakes. Ooh, I can't wear my hair in a ponytail anymore because I get a headache. I don't know if that happens to you guys. I swear, I used to could wear my hair in a ponytail every single day um, throughout high school and college. And I could, you know, it was not a problem now. If it's in a ponytail or in a bun on the top of my head for more than five minutes, I'm going to start feeling a headache. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you guys want to use something like Karen Chunky Cakes, you can do that. Um, it's not going to be as chunky as, you know, say like a blanket yarn or like what I'm wearing, um, but it'll do the job. And then you also have the opportunity, you could hold yarn double-stranded. So one of the hoodies that I made, I actually held this double-stranded because it is so much thinner than what I would consider a six weight yarn. It does, the wraps per inch does say, it confirms, this should be a size six yarn. It's just a lighter size six weight yarn. So I held this double for one of mine. That's an option. Um, right now I'm using Hobie Amigo. Let me see if I've still got one. I can show you guys if you like Hobie, because remember, Hobie does uh, bulk discounts. So this is a lot of yarn you're going to need for this. So Hobie might be a winner for you if you order enough. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here we go. I have been using this Amigo Chunky right here. So this is a five weight, so you would have to hold it double. But let me show you what it looks like held double because I'm working on a project right now and it is gorgeous. So this is what this project is looking like. It is also a 15 millimeter hook, 15, uh, I think I might be using a 16 for this actually, but look how pretty that is working up together. So that's an option. Uh, if you like ordering from Hobie, you could order um, however much you need. It would just be doubled up. Let's see. Um, if you guys purchased any of this on sale, I had a lot of people that scored a lot of this. Eco tie-dye. Um, this would be a fantastic option for this. You could actually pair it if you don't have enough. You could just pair it with a complementary single color. Um, I think Michaels actually came out with another round of something very similar to this. I think they called it something else, but I think they have it in store now. And it's got this nice variegated tone to it, so you can check them out. This would be a really good one for this. Uh, let's see, tried and true. I can get some of this out of here. Oh, that one doesn't have a thing on it. Let's see. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. This is an old version of this. This is an old label, but this is always a tried and true. So if you just can't find anything, Wooly Thick and Quick is a great option for this. Um, I also heard, I know my Walmart has its own brand of blanket yarn. So Mainstays Blanket Yarn. Not the super, super, super chunky one, not the ch chunky Chanel, but just they have a blanket yarn that's like this. So if you have Walmarts near you, you need a lot of yardage, it's going to be a lot cheaper uh, than buying Bernat. Uh, Joanne has their own brand of blanket yarn, so that's a fun option. Let's see. I think that's really everything. I think that's everything I have here that would work really well for that. Um... 
Yeah, I don't have a ton of different yarn options that, that are in my stash right now. Um, I do still have a lot of the Lion Brand roving stripes. So any kind of super bulky roving yarn would be beautiful in this. It's just, it's hard to care for, you know, so it tends to, to pill easier and, and just kind of age pretty fast. But if you, you have some and want to use it for something, it would be really cool to make a, to make a hoodie out of that. It would be a lot lighter weight with that roving yarn. That roving yarn tends to be lighter. Um, whereas this can get a little weighed down if you're using a heavier yarn. Um, I do not recommend Hometown USA um, unless you just really need an acrylic, but this is acrylic. So if you have to choose, I would go with something like this. The Hometown USA tends to stretch and thin itself out and it just doesn't last very long. It's not very good looking after, um, after you've worn it. It's gonna stretch your shoulders out a lot faster. Um, so yeah, I'm not a fan of Hometown USA for something like this. Um, I would choose a different acrylic option if you can. Um, yes, Bethy says Joanne also has the Big Twist Cuddle, which is blanket yarn. Yes, and, and sometimes I put it on sale. So check that out. I think Joanne does have a 20% coupon off of your entire purchase for curbside or pickup in store right now. So you could look into that and save some money there. Uh, and yes, that's why braided pigtails are my best friend. Yeah, so I'll do that or just the one, the single braid to one side now that it's long enough to do that. Um, so this is what I am going to go with. I'm super excited to use it because I haven't tried it yet. I'm sure it's going to be just like blanket yarn, um, but I've loved this colorway. And I wish I got two. I really thought that I, I could have made like a Luna cardigan with this by itself. Um... But I already have like three of those, <laughs> so um, I wanted an excuse to be able to uh, make this new crochet along with you guys. So um, let's jump in. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to figure out what hook size I need to make sure that this hoodie is going to fit. Now, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to make the smallest size for this hoodie. This is quite an oversized fit for a hoodie. Um, if you guys looked at the pattern, if you guys have looked at the sizing, um, the estimated bust circumference for just an extra small slash small, which is the size I'm going to make, I have a 34 inch bust. This finished Tonks hoodie at the extra small size is a 44 inch bust. So it's already 10 inches of, I think it's positive ease. I think that's the wording for, for me. Um, so there's no reason for me to go up any higher. Now, this, this pattern only goes up to a 3X, 4X, but the 3X, 4X is a 92-inch circumference. So it, it just, there wasn't a reason to go higher at that point because it's supposed to fit, 4X, 5X should fit up to uh, like a 60 inch bust, but this is such an oversized garment that you can size down or size up. So if you really want that super, super oversized look, just make sure you look at that um, estimated bust circumference. And that is the circumference of the finished garment. That is not the circumference of what it will fit um, or not the, not what, so it's of the finished garment, not who I think it should be fitting. So I'm not saying that someone with a 92 inch bust should make the 3X, 4X. I'm saying that that's the finished circumference of the garment. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> that's how I usually do it. Um, I go by gauge and that's why gauge is important. And I'm excited to actually, again, do a gauge swatch with you guys today so that you guys can see how that's done. If you've not done one before, I think it's really helpful not just to see it done, but then to troubleshoot. So I don't know if I'm going to match gauge right away. Um, you know, that's going to be the interesting thing. If I don't, then I can walk you through if you're, if you have too many stitches within the four inch limit, or if you have not enough, I can help you figure out ways to troubleshoot um, without necessarily having to change your hook size. So um, okay, so what do you need to know for this pattern? Um, you're going to have to know your basic chain, um, single crochet, half double crochet, half double crochet 
decrease, which in this pattern it's written as HDC two together. So you're working uh, two half double crochets. Uh, it's not two half double crochets. Half double crocheting two together to decrease, and I'll show you guys that when we're actually working on it. But I do. I think I have a whole video dedicated to increases and decreases um, on my channel. So if you need to learn how to do that, that's available. Uh, let's see. Super bulky yarn. Uh, yardage, when I flip the camera around to go over the gauge, I'll actually post the yardage so you guys can see it, but it is also available on the blog post. So if you click the link, if you go to the description of this video, there's a link to a blog post that's going to have all the information. It's going to have recommended yarn. So if you need a whole long list of yarn that you could try out and check out for this project, uh, you can go to the blog post. I have the yardage that you're going to need for each size. I have that estimated bust circumference of the final garments. You can check that out if you need to. Um, if you want to see different sized hoodies on different people, so you can see their measurements and what size they made, you're going to want to purchase the PDF. So there's a link in the description to do that too. If you go to the end of the PDF pattern, there's actually uh, two or three pages of measurement guides that has a photo of the tester, their measurements, the size that they made, so that you can see it on different body types. So you can see, okay, I have similar measurements to this person. This is the size they made. This is how it fit them. So that should be helpful if you if you really are just concerned. I don't really know what size I want to make. Uh, okay, so it says you'll need a 15 or a 16 millimeter crochet hook. Those are pretty easy to find. That's a standard size. Uh, it's either a 15, a 15.75, or a 16. Any within that range will most likely work. Um, but if you need one, these are the ones we still have in our Etsy shop as of this video. So we have a 15 and a 16 in our mermaid hook. So this is the mermaid ergonomic hook. So we have these two. I can hold them both up. So one's a 15, one's a 16. And that's that fade from purple to teal. We still have these available. Uh, and I think we have a couple. I think we have a couple 16s and a couple 15s in Mermaid. And then we have one yellow 16 millimeter left, excuse me, in our Etsy shop. So these will ship out. If you buy them now, they'll probably ship out today or tomorrow. Um, so if you, if you need one for the hoodie, you can purchase them in my shop. I'll have them out the door to you. You'll have them before this starts, unless you're in Canada. It'll probably take a little bit longer, but if you're here in the States, you'll definitely have it by the start of the crochet along. So those are available. Um, you'll need a tapestry needle and scissors. And that's pretty much it. And now it's time to look at our gauge. So if you'll have questions, please pop them in the chat. Let me know. Um, let's see. Yeah, so if you'll have questions, let me know. But let me know if you're going to join in. I would love hands up emoji or something if you're if you're planning on joining in on crocheting a hoodie. I had a lot of people in the Facebook group who said they were interested. If you're not in the Facebook group, um, be sure to join so you can share uh, share your progress. And I just I just realized it kind of matches, kind of matches. It doesn't have as much green, but like the purple and blue, that's really nice. Um, okay, so let's get started. Now, making a gauge. I have a feeling there are a lot of different ways listed out there to where you could make uh, how to make a gauge swatch, but I'm gonna share with you how I make my gauge swatch. Um, and hopefully it'll help if you, you know, have not made one before or if you're kind of unsure about how you are um, making them, if you're doing it correctly. Uh, little baby spooky bat says me and cats and is that cats and cats and drills woohoo i'm so glad you guys are joining in this is going to be really fun i'm excited about this one um okay so i'm going to start with my slip knot and just get that ready so the gauge for this one it's a four by four square and i do recommend finding yourself one of these uh we sell them but we're not the only ones there's plenty of them that you can find out there this is a gauge square tool um, you can see up here, this is one of ours. It says four by four inches, crochet gauge. Ours have um, 
hook measurement tools on the sides. So it starts with a 10 millimeter hook, um, goes up to a 25 millimeter hook, and these are to help you if you are not sure what the size of your hook is, you slip that into, into there, and if it fits in there, then that is the size of that hook. Um, so this one fits in at the 16 because it's a 16. So that's that's the goal. Uh, but we're, I'm going to use one of these. You can use a measuring tape, and I'll show that. But this is so much easier because it really blocks off the stitches and makes it easier to see what's actually inside the square versus trying to figure out lining up your tape measure. Okay, so the gauge for this hoodie is five half double crochet stitches by four half double crochet rows. So you're not having to mix up your stitches. It's all going to be half double crochet. Um, and your goal is to fit five stitches across inside your square and four rows inside your square. So you want to make sure that you're not counting your chain row and that you're not counting your turning rows. So what I suggest, and it really depends on the size of the square, but you want the square that you make, the swatch that you make, to be bigger than four by four, okay? So do not make a gauge swatch that is five stitches by four rows. I want you to make it bigger so that you're not counting the extra around it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two stitches and two rows to my gauge. So I'm going to go ahead and make a gauge swatch that is seven half double crochet stitches across and six rows tall. Okay. So let's see, that means I need to chain and I'm starting with my 16 millimeter hook. I need to chain eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, like I said, if y'all have any questions about this, well, especially while I'm doing this, feel free to pop them in the chat. And these have really long sleeves. I have pretty long arms, but they're definitely kind of getting in my way. I like that this one, it gets a little bit smaller around the cuff. So it's actually pretty easy to roll up and it'll stay because that cuff is a little bit skinnier. So you can see how that rolls up. Okay. So we're doing half double crochet stitches. Let me give myself a little more. I can't tell y'all how much I love this yarn. This is really pretty yarn. Um, just the, the color change is so quick, which is kind of nice because I feel like a lot of self-striping yarn, it takes a while to actually get the color to change, but this one is like confetti. I like it. All right. I have always found blanket yarn to be a little difficult to work with. If you are a true, true beginner and this is your first wearable, it's not gonna be my first recommendation for you um, to use for your, for your project. Um, I would go with something more like this Mandala um, or like the Lion brand Thick and Quick. Um, this can just be the tension, tensioning it is weird because it doesn't have any give to it. And that center piece that's in the middle, um, it's just weird. It's weird. I wouldn't ever teach with this for sure. Okay. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is how many I wanted. So I'm going to chain one and turn, and we're going to do six rows of this. Okay. Let's see how many people who are, um, and actually just in the chat, how many people in the chat have never made themselves a wearable item, like a garment? So a sweater or a cardigan um, or a shirt. Let me know. Um, and if you're joining in, let me know if this is going to be your first wearable garment piece, if you're joining in on the crochet along. All right, that's two rows. Ah, so Kat already, she already answered. Cats and Drill says, um, this will be my first wearable other than hats and scarves. Fantastic. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> I love getting people to, to try that for the first time. Um, 
especially if you're doing it along with me because I can answer questions, I can help you through the process. I'm crocheting my hair into this already. There we go. Yeah, that's it's really exciting. I've had um, a lot of people who've told me that like my Luna cardigan, I have a crochet along that's on the YouTube channel. And this is our third crochet along. So if you didn't know, uh, there are two more that you can go back and follow along. Now, obviously, I'm not live on those, but you can always comment on the videos. I do check my comments. I do get notified if there's comments on my older videos. Um, and I try to go back through and respond. Um, but you can make a Luna cardigan with me and you can make a Dobby cardigan with me. And they're both different. Um, and a mini puff. Never mind. This is the fourth one. So you can make a Luna, a Dobby a mini puff, or now a tonk. So this will be the fourth crochet along. So that's really exciting. I didn't even, <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking this is the third one, but it's the fourth. So that's really cool. So yeah, if you enjoy this and you feel like this helps you feel more confident in making wearables, you have options to uh, follow along and make some other ones as well, which is really nice. Bethy says, as soon as my deposit hits from work, I'm getting the gauge and wraps per inch tools. Woohoo! They really are helpful. I mean, I don't use my wraps per inch tool as much as my gauge tool, but my gauge tool, I mean, especially when I'm designing, I use it all the time. Um, it, it just makes it so much easier to see what's happening versus trying to use a measuring tape for me. Um, and some people prefer. If you prefer it, I totally get it. <laughs> um, but I have found it to be very helpful. Uh, especially if you're unsure. I mean, it just helps make it a little bit um, more certain as to what you're dealing with, what you're looking at. Winter says, I made a gauge swatch for my current project. I ended up with a 20 by 10 square of, of double crochet that measured four inches. So I had to do a four inch gauge swatch. Otherwise I would have had to, oh yeah. I mean, and you know, with this one, uh, if I, if I realize that this whole thing fits inside the window, then I'm going to have to frog and, re and restart um, because obviously it'll be way too small. So my gauge will be way too small. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I've got at least one more row. And I have pretty tight tension. So um, I tend to crochet more tightly than other people. Um, I have had testers who have had to, um, if I'm using a 15 or a 16 millimeter hook, they've had to drop all the way down to like a 12 to match my gauge. So I do tend to crochet pretty tightly. Um, but then there are people who crochet more tightly than me and they've got to go up to like a 16, I mean, to like a 17 or an 18 millimeter hook to match my gauge. So it really just depends on your tension. All right, so I've got seven across, one, two, three, four, five, six tall. Um, and let me check this and then I'll turn the camera around so you guys can see. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna do one more row because I want this to, and I'll show you guys, actually. Let me show y'all before I do that. So let me go ahead and turn the camera around. I can already tell that this is going to be tighter tension than my original. So we will talk about that. So let me flip this around for you guys. Let's see. Okay. And let me flip it, flip it, flip it. There we go. All right, let's see if I can get this just right. You can see the bottom of my hoodie there. Okay, perfect. All right. So you guys can see, here's the page swatch. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches. Now, according to the pattern, you can see right here, um, I've got five stitches by four rows is what I'm looking at. So if I take my tool here 
and I, I try to find, um, so this, this yarn, it's, it can be easy if I can find a stitch that's pretty bright and stands out. So I'm going to go with this stitch as my starting point. I'm going to place it right at the edge and count across one, two, three, four, five. So I'm a little wider on those, but not enough for me to be concerned. Um, if I kind of squish that together, um, I've definitely got at least one, two, three, four, five, five stitches here. So that's good. Now, if it was like this and I could see that it was like a half stitch here and I only had four and a half, um, that might be pushing it a little bit, but this is almost right. Now, my concern here, because again, I don't want to count this starting chain. All right. So I'm going to actually skip this whole first row and I'm going to find this kind of post portion. So if we look up close, you've got the cross section of your stitch, but then you've got the post and I want to start below the post. Right, so I set this down, make sure I can see the bottom of that post. That's where I'm gonna set my gauge square. If I count up one, two, three, four, five, I've actually got a five by five instead of a five by four. All right, so what that means is that my jacket will probably end up being, um, so actually, okay, the hoodie is made this way. All right, so the hoodie goes up and down. The panels are this direction, okay? Instead of being this way where you're working across and that creates the back of the hoodie this direction, this is the way that this one is going. So this is gonna help me explain this better. If this is the direction of the panels, right? So the hood is up here. Uh, the bottom of your hoodie's down here. This is the direction the stitches are going in. That means that if... I am short here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got five instead of four, so it's smaller. That means that my hoodie is going to be a little bit um, more narrow, all right? So you can keep this in mind, where as long as you don't mind, if you say, well, I'm already making it, and it's going to be too big for me. So if I'm making, again, a 44-inch bust and I have a 34 inch bust, then it's probably going to be okay for me to be a little off. But a whole row, that's kind of quite a bit to be off. <laughs> so, but my concern for me is that I'm almost exact on my rows. Okay. So if I went up a hook size, I might end up being too large on my rows because I already had to kind of squish it in like this to get all five of my stitches in there. So if I go bigger, this stitch is gonna be pushed out and I may only have four, all right? So for me, I'm gonna go with the fact that this is probably gonna stretch a little bit. Um, I can try to relax my tension a little bit and maybe you know try not to pull my stitches so tight. Um, but I mean, if I pull this, let's see if I can pull that a little bit. Let's see where we're at if I do that. So if I do that, I'm at one, two, three, four, and a little bit extra. So that's not that's not too bad. Um, but if you wanted to try, so for me, if I said, okay, this is, the rows are just too small. Um, I really want to make sure I have four rows because you're worried about your width. Then you could go up to the next hook size. So I used a 16 millimeter for this. So you can go up to a 17 or an 18, which we sell those. I know all of these sizes are kind of weird. Um, if you if you are new to my channel and you're watching this, um, you may think, well, where am I going to find those? Um, we make them because I love working with this size, this weight of yarn. And I realize that there's too many holes, there's too many gaps in the hook sizes. So like you have to go from a 15 all the way down to a 12. I'm not really okay with that. I want to have more options. So we made a 13, we made a 14, um, we make 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, uh, 21, 22. So it just gives you a little more uh, wiggle room to play around with your gauge and not feel like you have to jump all the way from a 15 down to a 12 or from a 15.75 all the way up to a 19. Um, we wanted to give you guys a little more options. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with this and yes, um, I saw it mentioned in the comments, little, uh, no, who said that? Let's see. 
Little baby spooky bats. Yes. Um, I usually add another strand of yarn. Yes. So if you feel like your gauge swatch is too small, you have more stitches inside your gauge square than you need or more rows inside it than you need, then your gauge is too small. So you can either go up a hook size or you can add a strand of a different lighter weight yarn. So I would not add, I wouldn't probably add an entire other strand of the same yarn because then it might get too big. You can try it. Again, this is why gauge swatching is important because you can play around. You can figure out what works, what doesn't. Um, but let's actually try just for the sake of things because you guys are watching. Let's add in a strand of this, which is a five weight, and just see where it puts us. So let me see if I can find one that's already open. Of course I don't, but I've got this one. So we'll go with this blue. I'm gonna use this blue just so we can do an experiment because experiments are fun, right? All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and frog this back and I'm gonna do the same size swatch. I'm gonna do seven rows. I mean, seven stitches, six rows. And let's see what the difference was. And let me write that down. So that's another thing. If you're playing around with swatching, do yourself a favor and take notes so you don't forget. So I ended up having with one strand of blanket and a 16 millimeter hook, I had, uh, what was it? It was almost like 4.75 stitches because I had to make it a little bit smaller to fit all five. So I'm going to try to make that uh, so I know it was a little, a little big there by, uh, I think I had five rows. All right. So now we're going to add that in and now I have something to compare it to. So taking notes is really helpful here so that you can remember what you were dealing with. All right, so let's do these together. There we go. Same hook size. And let's do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and then I'm gonna do these. And actually, I'm gonna work on this while I'm working on this, let's flip it so that I can actually see y'all's comments. Let's turn it back around this way. Okay. Oh. Lexi is working on a hexicardi but I'm so intimidated trying to get the measurements right so it fits me. And Mickey says the Tonk City was the very first wearable that I crocheted. I don't even think, I, I feel like I always forget that, Mickey. I, I forget that that was the first one. So I have so many people whose first wearables were uh, like the, the Luna Cardigan or the Dobby. That was, those two have been big first time wearables for people that um, I forget that the Tonks was your first. So that's really, really cool. Um, and Winter says, it ended up working out quite well for the hood at least. Uh, but did the hood take forever to crochet? I'm sure. This will be a much faster hood on the, <laughs> on the Tonks hoodie for sure. Um, Tracy's working and lurking. Hello. We are working on our second second gauge swatch just to see what kind of difference it makes to add in a strand of five weight to this yarn. And see, I feel like I'm feel like I've got pretty pretty tight tension happening right now. Um, and it's always a little bit harder, I think, to get used to holding two strands together at first, uh, especially when the two strands are so different. Um, the acrylic that I'm using, the five weight acrylic 
is a very, very different feel than the blanket yarn. Uh, so it's kind of weird trying to keep them held together. But we got this. Um, so when it comes to hexi cardigans, I have to say, uh, I tried to start on one that was chunky and I just put it down immediately. I'm not a fan. Uh, I mean, I would love to at some point try to make a chunky pattern for a hexagon cardigan, but I just don't really like them. <laughs> and I know a lot of people do, and I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think we all like what we like, um, but I'm not a really big fan of them. Uh, I, I really have no desire to make myself one. Um, I kind of feel the same way about granny squares, um, granny square cardigans. Uh, but it's a big trend right now. Uh, I have a feeling by the time I figured out how to, to, to design a pattern for a hexagon cardigan that the trend would be over. I feel like that's usually my luck. I don't jump on the bandwagon early enough. Um, you know, I, I released my max stranger things uh jacket like a year after the show <laughs> i'm just not quick with my designs you know i can make some of my smaller designs i can get them out a little faster um but i like to take my time i don't like to put these really strict deadlines on when things need to be released and finished because then i feel like i rush the process and then you make mistakes um, and it's not going to be as good of a pattern for me, some designers can do that and like more power to them. If you can crank those patterns out and you can get them right, um, I think that's awesome. <laughs> uh, but I feel like, you know, like I said, I picked up some yarn. I tried to try to start learning how to make a, a granny hexagon, just like a simple granny hexagon so that I could, you know, make it with a uh, super chunky yarn. I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that made me a little sad. Uh, Anxious Pajama Day says, uh, or Emma says, uh, the Dobby is my favorite. And I have so many people that have made that one. It's, it really is a nice, uh, it's a cool one because the, the different yarn that you use gives it a different look. And because it's a five weight, a lot of people have four weight yarn around the house um, it's easier to find worsted weight yarn for a lot of people. And so because you can double up worsted weight yarn, there's a lot of people that do that. And I, and I think um, the Dobby is great for that because you can use the uh, double stranded worsted weight yarn and a 10 millimeter hook. And I think a lot more people feel a little more confident with that weight of yarn. They have it around. Um, so yeah, that's a favorite, but um, I would love to try to make a Dobby um, with some five weight cotton. I think that would be really nice. So that's on my that's on my to do list. Um, I may reach out to Made in America Yarn again and see if they want to sponsor some yarn for that project. I think that could be really cool. Um, they have some really cool like cotton roving style yarn that's really nice. It's actually what I use to make my Pomona tea. So if you guys saw my Pomona tea, that was um, two strands of five weight yarn to make the Pomona tea. But I think it would be, I think it could make a really nice Dobby, a summery, summery Dobby uh, using some cotton. All right, I'm almost done. One, two, three, four, five. I'm on my last row. And then we'll look at this. Lexi asks, do you happen to have a video on how to measure your body? Also, when is the crochet along going to start? I don't have a video on how to measure my measure your body. I would check and see if whoever is making, uh, whoever made the pattern, do you know which pattern you're following and see if that designer has any, um, any advice on measuring your body? I mean, I'm sure you know, you obviously want to know your chest circumference, which would be the widest part of your chest, but then it's kind of figuring out shoulder to wherever you want the cardigan to hit you. But that's where the hexagon cardigans are weird because it's like 
it's not going to get bigger one direction, you know, so you've got to figure out pretty much their circumference here, but then maybe add length to the bottom. Like once you've attached the two pieces together, you can add length to the bottom and then you can add length in the center uh, between the shoulders, I think. Like you can, but see, that's where it just gets weird for me. It has to be made to measure. And I've never been good at designing made to measure stuff because it is vague to me. I never did made to measure patterns for me. Like if I, I, I didn't like following patterns. <laughs> um, so the idea of trying to follow a made to measure pattern just felt it felt like it was too overwhelming for me to even begin, which is one of the reasons I don't design made to measure patterns, because I feel like, especially for beginners, it can feel really overwhelming. Like, am I even measuring myself correctly? So I think, um, see if the designer has any resources, reach out to them, um, find out if they have any resources they can send you to. So even if it's not their YouTube channel or their resource, they, I'm sure they've had the question before. So you can ask if they know of any good videos to help with self-measurement for the design that you're working on. Um, and Winter says, mine's made with sport yarn. Yeah, the hood that you're making sport yarn. Yeah, definitely takes longer than this. Um, Kim says, chunky granny squares have made a few and still not sure how I feel about them. I want to like them. Now, I do have to tell you guys, it was, if you don't follow her on Instagram, stripes and roses handmade. I think it's stripes and roses and maybe stripes and rose handmade one of those two check out her instagram because she finished an amazing chunky granny square blanket that is just so i like the the like vibrant colors and it's this beautiful deep like bluish purple if i'm remembering correctly with like yellow and and like this reddish pink and white i mean it's just stunning um, and I think she made it with an eight millimeter hook. I think it was one of our eight millimeter hooks. So I got to be like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, but check that out because it's amazing. Like if I was going to make granny squares, that's what I'd want them to look like. It was absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Emma says, my usual weight is the DK. Lexi says, this is my first and only Hexi Cardi. Uh, I have only kept pushing through because I bought a ridiculous amount of yarn for it. Yeah. Totally understand you there. Um, Emma says, I think I've made three hexi parties so far and I have one in progress. Uh, I would make you a colorful hexi, Evelyn, but I have no idea how much it would be to get it to you when it's completed. Truth. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, you know, I just, you make things that make you happy and that wasn't making me happy. <laughs> so, so there's that. That's what you do. I think it's important. Um, okay, so here is the second gauge swatch. So we are going to look at that real quick. Um, and I will turn the camera around so you guys can actually see it up close because I think that will be helpful. And anyone watching the replay, I hope you find this helpful if you're trying to figure out how to gauge swatch for this project. Because I know, I know that that can be intimidating, especially for beginners figuring out how to do this. Okay, let's get that even. All right. This is what the new one looked like. All right. It's definitely more um, uh, dense because of the two strands together. Uh, yarn work says, I tried a hexi and blanket already frogged. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Just like, I mean, my patterns aren't everyone's cup of tea. So I totally understand. Okay, let's see what happens. Last time we were at 4.75 stitches by five rows. We kind of want to be as close as we can to five stitches by four rows. All right, so if I find the edge of this stitch right here, so I see the post piece right here, I'm gonna go all the way to the edge and I am at one, two, three, four. I'm about the same with rows. Now I have to say, I can't really push that in as easily. Um, like if I go here, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I mean, I got the five rows. And then if I find the bottom of this post, so I've got my cross piece, my post, I'm going to place it at the bottom of the post. And I've got one, two, three, four. It didn't help that much for me. I've got about four and a half. So one, two, three, four and a half right here. It's not an entire fourth row. I'd have to really smush that in. Um, so if I'm making sure that's pressed down, it's about four and a half rows. Uh, it does say I was at five rows. 
not four and a half. So I do think it helped a little, but not a lot. I do feel like I would need to go up to like a 17 millimeter hook um, versus this uh, just to get it a little bit wider. Um, I'm not going to be holding anything double because I already am pushing it with <laughs> the amount of yarn that I've got, but I might up to a 17 for the project um, just to make sure because like I said, I stitch pretty tightly. So I think if I go up to a 17, um, that that will, you know, it'll still be a good, um, density to the fabric for me. It's not going to be super, super loose. Um, but yeah, I may do that or I may stick with a 16 and know it's just going to be a little bit smaller. I don't know yet. Um, we'll have to wait and see, <laughs> see, see how I feel next week. Um, and see if my Joanne order has shipped. Uh, with the rest of my yarn for this project, because I think that that will help me um, really feel like it's getting real. <laughs> um, so I can't wait for you guys to join in on this one. I really do think it's going to be fun. Um, a few notes about this one, that it is going to be a little different from my past crochet alongs. So this is a longer crochet along. This is a bigger piece. Um, I think what I'm going to do this go round is I'm going to still go live every week, but I'm going to be leaving you guys with homework. So I'm not going to go live for every single moment of this hoodie. Um, I'm going to try to break it up into sections like I usually do. Um, so obviously we're going to start at the beginning of the pattern, which is the back panel. And I'll be going live with you to start out the back panel, but then at the end of that session, however far we get on the back panel, that's it. Um, we're going to finish it out at home and we're going to meet back up. Back panels will be finished and we'll move on together to the front panels. So you're still going to get to see any of the areas that might be tricky. Okay, because once we get started on the back panel, it's the same. You repeat the same thing until the back panel is done. So um, I feel like it would make more sense for me to say, okay, now just finish this back panel at home. Now that we've got it started together, when we come back, we'll start on the front panels together. Um, so I want to make sure that I hit all of the sections that might be difficult. Like we're going to seam everything up together. Um, you know, once we get the... so. Video one, and I need to write this down. So video one is going to be back panel, start the back panel. And this is also going to help me um, go ahead and pre-schedule all of these. Because before, I was like, I don't know how long it's going to take me, so I don't know how long the crochet along is going to be. And I think it would be nice for us to have a good solid idea of like how long are we going to be working on this. And I think that will help because we'll have a light at the end of the tunnel. Like this is the date that it's going to be done. Not like, I don't know, maybe it'll be 9, 10, 11, 12 sessions. Who knows? So video one, we're starting the back panel. Video two, we're going to start the front panels. And I'll probably be able to finish one of the front panels on that video. And then you'll just have to make the second one on your own. And then for video three, we're going to come back and we're going to sew up the front and, and back panel. So that'll be video three. And what's after that? Bum, bum, bum. After we sew up the panels, then we move on to adding the hood. So I think that video number three is going to be sewing up the panels starting on the hood. I think that would be a good one. So we'll start the hood. Once you have the hood finished, we're going to come back for video number four and we're going to add the front border and we're going to sew up the front of the jacket. I think that would be a good video number four. All right. And then that leaves video number five. Well, that doesn't leave video number five, but video number five will be the pocket. So we've got panels, hood, front border, pocket, still need the sleeves. So video number six is going to be adding the sleeves. And depending on how that goes, 
maybe we'll come back for a seventh video as just like a finishing up and making sure, you know, if anyone has troubleshooting questions or needs help with anything, we can do a video seven as like a celebration video. <laughs> um, and just to see the finished piece, because I don't want to leave it at video six where I say, okay, now go home and finish it. And then we never get back together to look at the final piece. So I think video seven, number seven, will be the final reveal. All right, so seven total videos. And I think that's good because I think we had eight or nine, even maybe 10 for the mini puff jacket because I just wasn't able to finish things as quickly as I wanted to. Um, and if we need to extend pieces, so, you know, if we need to add an eighth video, if for some reason I can't get the hoodie pocket made and sewn on in one video, I'm pretty sure I can. Um, but just in case, you know, we can push things through. Um, I am, I think, I think I'm going to be putting instructions on the blog post for each section. Because again, I do want this to be accessible um, to where you don't have to buy the PDF. Obviously, I appreciate the PDF purchases. That helps me, uh, helps support me. Um, the first video, um, I see Le Lexi asking, first video is next Tuesday. So I go live every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Central Time here on YouTube. Um, so these will take place on Tuesdays at this time, 12 p.m. Central Time. I go live for about an hour. Um, again, check the video description. Uh, there is a blog post that's going to have all of this information. So it's going to have the date of the next video. Um, and like I said, I think what I'm going to do is just before the video starts, um, I'm going to release the instructions for that video. So if we're going to work on the back panel together next Tuesday, I will put the instructions for the back panel on that blog post uh, before that video goes live so that you guys have access to that. If you don't, if you don't want to or can't purchase the PDF, that will be there. Obviously, I won't have pictures because we're going to be doing it together, but that will be available there. Um, and I think that's everything. If y'all have questions, let me know. I've still got a few minutes. Let's see. Emma says, Hexy Cardies make me happy, so I'm happy to share the happiness with others. Yes, and that's why I said... We all just need to focus on making things that make us happy. There's no reason for us to make things that don't bring us joy, um, you know, especially if we have to keep them. I mean, that's my thing. I don't sell a lot of my stuff. And I don't know if you guys can see, all of these are full now. Uh, this one, this one, this one, uh, and then all the ones above it. There's one more row up there. It's all finished pieces. Um, I do need to put them on, I need to put them on Etsy in case someone wants to buy them um, because I'm going to run out of room. That's going to be a serious problem, but it's hard. It's hard. And I know a lot of people, you know, people don't always want to buy them for what I feel like they're worth. <laughs> so then it's hard to let them go. Um, but I do have a lot of samples that need, I need to just get rid of. It's time. Um, and if I do, then it gives me a reason to do a crochet along because I'm going to make another one. Um, I've never made a Tonks hoodie with blanket yarn. Like I said, I've always wanted to. This is a great opportunity to do that. I'll be able to see the difference between this one and that one. And then I need to get rid of this one because it's time to sell this one. <coughs> and Lexi says, my one day off. Yay, that's awesome. That's super exciting. Okay. I don't think I have anything new to share with you guys right now. I think that's really it, jumping into this crochet along. Um, I will show you guys my progress on my um, mini puff bomber jacket. That's going to be on the list of things coming up for testing. Let's see if I can give myself enough slack to show you guys this. Now, I sized down on this one, and I shouldn't have. Um, so this is actually going to fit me one size down. So instead of, um, I usually make a small medium now, small slash medium. Uh, this is going to be considered the extra small slash small size. And I am going to block this. So that's my goal. I'm going to do a video on blocking this jacket. This is an acrylic yarn. Um, I'm going to try to wet block it and see what happens because I've never done that before, but this one, the edges are curling really bad and I want to see if I can fix it. 
Um, and I think that'd be really great to share because I've always been really intimidated of blocking. And I think it's time for me to just bite the bullet and try. But I need to buy, I need to buy my pins. Um, I'm going to buy some exercise flooring because they have it at Aldi right now. At Aldi. Aldi. Yeah, Aldi. Um, but as you guys can see, as it sits, this is small for me. This is really small. Um, so this is definitely more of the extra small, small versus a small medium, because like I said, I'm a 34 inch bust that is within the range of small, medium, not extra small, small. Um, now I can obviously, this is stretchy cause it's, you know, I've got the ribbing here. Um, so I can stretch it together. And if I were to put some kind of closure, that would be fine. Uh, I think I am going to add one more row of this color to the edge of this, or maybe just one more pink row. I haven't decided yet um, to do that. But honestly, I don't know if I'm going to add it. I'm going to try to block it first. So once I add the sleeves, I'm going to block it and try to stretch it a little bit. Stretch it here, but you guys can see how that's curling. And I mean, I can try to kind of force it to not curl, but as soon as I like wear it around and move around, it curls again. So if I can get rid of that, and then the collar curls. So this collar, this is curling up, this is curling down. So um, I think if I block it, maybe I can get that to stay. Because if I do that, it's great. Like that's perfect. That's exactly how I want it to look. Um, yeah, and the stripes on the collar are just from the front border. So this is like, um, what is this like? Like the mini puff? Yeah, the mini puff. So you add the collar first, then you add your, your front border. And then I'm going to have my sleeves. Um, it is going to have the ribbed, long ribbing on the sleeve like this. It'll look just like this, but around the sleeve. And the striping is going to go opposite. So I'm starting here. So it'll go teal, purple, blue, pink. And then depending, um, I don't think I'll be able to add this. I think it'll just go straight to that. So I'm excited about this one. And I don't know if you guys saw, let's do one more while I'm on here so you guys can see. The Power Puff jacket is almost ready for testing. This is the Power Puff Bomber. So I got the Mini Puff Bomber that I just showed you. This is the Power Puff Bomber. These are our um, uh, spin-offs from my Power Puff jacket and my Mini Puff jacket. I wanted to do a bomber style of both with the nice big ribbing here, nice big ribbing here. Um, this is that super, super jumbo yarn that you use a 25 millimeter hook with. So that's what I used here, but same kind of idea, striped, striped design option to add length here if you want, cause this is pretty cropped on me. Um, but then again, adding the collar, then adding the um, front border. Now this one you use smaller weight yarn and a smaller hook for the border here. And then you've got the ribbing around the wrist here. And it does leave a little bit of a hole here. I went through and kind of just sewed in, like you can see pieces. I kind of just sewed the holes up just to make them a little bit smaller, just because this yarn gaps when you use that smaller hook. Um, but these are coming soon. So I'm excited about these. I, I'm, I'm really excited to be adding to that collection. Um, and then the Power Puff Vest is coming out this week. So if you guys have been waiting, um, let's see if I've got one, just in case you haven't seen it. Here we go, this one. This is releasing in a day or two. So this one is three strands of super bulky. So this is like a wooly stick and quick, but it's Hobie. So this is Hobie Umami, you can see the three strands. One, two, three. I used a 25 millimeter hook. Um, you've got your bottom here. There is a drawstring inside of this. You actually work around the drawstring. Now you don't have to add that. That's not an option, you know. Um, but I thought that was cool because you can tie this up. I'm not really wearing high-waisted jeans. Uh, these are pretty low. If I wore high-waisted, it would hit me right there. Um, and I can pull that around. And you have the option on this one to either do an oversized collar. Let's see if I can pull this. You can do an oversized collar or you can do the hood. And this one's got the hood. So it's an oversized hood. <laughs> I think I can show that. Uh, oversized hood or an oversized collar. Um, 
but this one is releasing this week and it has a matching pair. Now this matches the other one. I made three of these because I love them so much. Um, but I made Powerpuff mittens. They're fingerless gloves and it's ribbing. So you can see the ribbing. So it matches the ribbing here. And I made them mismatched because I love mismatched. And I'm going to make a pair to match these that'll be mismatched as well. Uh, but these match one of the other versions of this that I made. This is Lion Brand Vel Lux Jumbo, which is on clearance. So if you think this looks cool, those are my Power Puff mitts. And I'm going to do a bundle so you can get both if you want to. Um, but the matching one I will share, just in case you haven't seen it, because I haven't shared this on social media either. Not really. Um, I got some indoor pictures of it, but not any good outdoor ones. You can see the colors are crazy. But like I said, this stuff is like more than 50% off right now, if you like this. Um, but this is what this looks like together. Let me lift this up so you guys can see a little better. Okay. So this one also has the hood because I really liked that look. So there's the, what that looks like. And all of my hoods have like a pixie to them because you, you sew it right here. Um, but I've got my strings here that I can tie if I want to. There we go. And you could add more. You could add another tie. You could add like a snap or a buckle or something if you wanted to. Um, but I thought that was really fun. And this is what ma they match. I feel like I'm a, like a boxer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was, this was really fun to make. So this will be releasing this week, um, probably tomorrow or Thursday. So be on the lookout, Instagram or Facebook group or whatever. These should be available for purchase. Um, this by itself, these by themselves, or as a bundle. So I will have the bundle um, available as well. But all right, guys, I can't wait to start the Tonk study with you guys next week, next Tuesday. Um, remember, you can also sign up. You can subscribe to get emails about like reminders. So if you want a reminder the night before, that the video is going to be going live um, or a reminder that the next set of instructions are up. Um, you can sign up using the link in the description, subscribe to the newsletter. Now you can choose to only get emails about this, um, about this crochet along, or you can get all the emails. So you can sign up for the full newsletter. Um, but if you only choose these, then you won't get other emails either. I'm trying to do a lot better with segmentation. So you're only getting the information from us that you want to receive. So if you want info about the crochet along and like crochet hooks, you can choose that. Um, so hopefully that'll help um, with my emails and making sure that, that we're sending the right information out to the right people about what you guys want to hear about. So that info is down there. Um, if you've been on our newsletter for a while, if you've been getting emails from us for a while, um, we are switching over to a new email server. Um, the new one, the price went up. It, it was like over 3,500%, <laughs> um, up from what it was. And so we found a new email provider. So if you have been getting emails from us for a while, you're going to need to resubscribe. So use the, the subscription for the crochet along and choose the, whatever you want to hear. You don't even have to choose crochet along updates, but make sure that you subscribe for like the, the contacts or um, if you want to know about tools or patterns, subscribe to your interests because our old email account is going to be shutting down at the end of this month. We're not going to be sending from that account anymore. So if you've been getting emails, you want to keep getting emails, use the subscribe in the description here and choose your interests to make sure that you keep getting emails from us. All right, that's it, guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. I will see you guys Friday on my Instagram account. If you're on Instagram, I'm going to have a Pink Sheep and Friends Live. 
Um, I need to announce the person that I'm going to be going live with, which is going to be tomorrow. So if you're on my Instagram account, look out for the announcement for my guest tomorrow. Um, and I'll see you guys live on Friday. And if not, I'll see you all next Tuesday. So I hope you'll have a good week. Until next time, happy hooking!